Hello, NCSY. It's my pleasure to share a Pura message with all of you out in uh, YouTube land. Uh, the story of Purim is told in Megillah's Esther, the Megillah that we read on Purim night and again on Purim day. The story of the Megillah's Esther has 10 chapters. And I think the turning point in the entire Megillah happens at the end of chapter 5, heading into chapter 6, exactly the halfway point of the Megillah. That's the point at which, up until then, everything is looking bad for the Jews. Haman is plotting to destroy us. He's working together with King Ahasuerus. Everything is looking down. From that point forward, everything starts to turn in our favor. It's when Ahasuerus decides to have Mordechai paraded around the streets of Shushan, wearing, wearing the royal clothing and, and, uh, and, and riding on the, on, the, uh, on the horse of the king. And it's when the tide starts to turn positively in the favor of the Jewish people. That turning point, five chapters into the Megillah, I think is reflected in the fact that we read the words, Balayla hahu, that night, Nadida shenas the king could not sleep. Now, of course, at face value, the king that it's referring to is King Achashverosh. But as we know on a deeper level, every time in the Megillah that we see the word, the king, the king could not just be referring to King Ahasuerus, but it could be referring to the King of Kings, to God himself, who was sitting and, and uh, in judgment that night, and making sure that the judgment reflected favorably on the Jewish people. As an expression of that turning point, uh, turning point or an expression of that idea that God sat in judgment that night, many Baalei Kriya, as they're reading the Megillah, Read that that sentence, Balayla Hahu Samelech, in the tune of Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur music. The tune goes, Balayla Hahu Samelech, which is reflective of the king that we're actually talking about being God Himself, not just King Achashverosh. Interestingly, any any Sefer in Tanakh, any book in the Jewish Bible that you open, is written in Hebrew, but also has Targum, an Aramaic translation written next to it. Usually you would expect the Hebrew words, if there are 10 or 11 or 12 of them, there are going to be 10 or 11 or 12 Aramaic words in translation. However, when you get to that Pasuk, that verse, Balailahahu, Nadidashana Samelech, as you see in the Megillah in front of me here, you see this entire translation in Aramaic is so many words, so many more words. I, I counted it once. It's actually about 600 words in translation of the Pasuk, Balayla Hahu, Nadidashana Samela. Why? What's in the translation that's not in the original? So if you actually read it, it talks about all of the miracles that happened on that night that the king was sitting in judgment of the Jewish people. That in fact, that was the night that the Jews were released from slavery in Egypt. That was the night that Sarah, our foremother, after 90 years of not having any children, finally became pregnant with her son Yitzchak. That there was miracle after miracle after miracle that took place that night. Pesach night, the 14th of Nisan. That was the night that we were sla saved from slavery in Egypt. And that was the night that we were redeemed in the Purim story as well. I think this is so indicative of the way the Jewish calendar works. We're used to thinking about calendars as a line, that and that every point on that line is a brand new point that we're experiencing for the very first time. When in fact, I think the way we can really relate to a calendar, to the Jewish calendar, is that any time we're experiencing a day in Jewish history, it's that date that we are re-experiencing again. And therefore, the inherent nature of any day is so important and valuable for us to keep in mind. Because as we're as you're watching this on Purim, there is an inherent nature to the day of Purim, which is a day of festivity and rejoicing. There is an inherent nature to the day of Yudal and Nisan, the night when the Jews were redeemed not just from slavery in Egypt, but also from the from the the, the threat of destruction in, in Shushan from Haman and Achashverosh. 
And so too on a negative way even, that Tisha B'Av, the reason why there are five tragedies that befell the Jewish people throughout Jewish history on Tisha B'Av, that's not coincidence, but that's reflective of the fact that every day on a calendar has an inherent nature. So let's keep that in mind. And as we're celebrating Purim here, let's rejoice, not just with the rejoicing of this Purim, but channeling the energy that is hardwired into the day and expecting almost that miracles will be performed for the Jewish people on this day, just as they have throughout Jewish history. A happy Purim to all.